Hey y'all, welcome back to Poplar Creek Farm. I feel like it's been a bit since I've done a video. We have been so busy. Uh, everything is just kind of like in full swing. And so we are just, we're just busy and I just don't always have time to think about picking up the camera uh, to do a video. So I wanna to talk to you guys about how my markets are going and just how things have been. Um, so one of the things that I just started, and I've done this before and I talked about it on here before, um, but I haven't done it in a while, is the Whole30. I am once again doing the Whole30. I think summertime for like homesteaders and gardeners is really one of the best times to do the Whole30 because you have such access to fresh fruits and veggies local fresh fruits and veggies. Um, there's farmer's markets. Obviously we sell at farmer's markets, but even I've been buying other produce at farmer's markets, things I don't grow, um, to be able to have the fresh, which is really nice. So today's day three for me of the Whole30. And if you guys don't know what the Whole30 is, it is a diet, but it's not really a diet. It's not meant for weight loss. Although, can you lose weight on it? Of course. Um, when you eat healthy, you know, you, you can lose weight. Uh, but it's basically a body reset. So you're getting rid of processed foods, uh, carbohydrates, you know, not, you can eat natural carbs, like you can eat fruits and veggies um, that have carbohydrates, but you can't eat pasta. You can't eat any added sweeteners, um, even honey, which is a little sad to me because I do love my honey. Um, but you can't eat any of the processed things or anything that's sweetened. And that's basically just to help you cut your cravings. It also is a diet that helps reduce inflammation. You can't eat any dairy. Uh, it's basically, again, it's like to help to reduce inflammation, reduce allergen um, exposure. It kind of reduces a lot of the things that people are oftentimes allergic to or uh, that irritate their gut, um, that cause you to be sluggish. And so I'm doing it for more for um, the gut health, gut reset, as well as the energy than anything else. Yes, again, I may lose some weight on it, but that's not my goal. Um, that's not the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to feel mm -hmm. less tired, less sluggish, um, less just worn out in general, and to feel lighter. So when I eat, and this is the part of the reason that I was doing this is because at, going to the farmer's markets, there's a lot of food trucks there. Um, there's a lot of vendors who do baked goods, things like that. And it's really easy to, when you're standing there for four or five hours and you get tired and you get hungry, to go buy something. And it's not always the healthiest of options. Yes, at farmer's markets, there are super healthy options. But if you're looking for something that's already prepared, the options aren't the healthiest. Um, so therefore, I, I really just needed this reset. My gut really needed it. Um, I've been dealing with a lot of, of GI discomfort, just belly bloating and things like that that are just not fun um, and uncomfortable. So I am doing the Whole30 again and today's day three, I'm definitely hitting that I'm tired stage um, because the first two weeks are really kind of rough. And then after that, you really do, you do really get an energy boost, um, which is awesome. I can't wait for that. I'm ready for the energy boost. But I already feel lighter. I already feel healthier. Um, just in a couple of days of not eating junk, like I already feel, I already feel somewhat better. I'm tired, yes, but overall I feel better. Um, and so the other thing is, how are the markets going? So markets have been going really super well. I've had some really rough weeks that uh, basically it was weather related that were rough. Um, so whenever it's rainy or cool, people just don't come out, obviously. I mean, I wouldn't want to go walk around outside to shop when it's kind of yucky out. Um, so we've struggled in that sense because this summer has been very, very wet here, <laughs> extremely wet. Um, but when I have been able to bring large amounts of produce or decent amounts of produce, I have sold quite a bit. Um, and so with that, I definitely need to continue expanding the produce production um, on the farm to be able to bring more to farmers markets, the specific markets. Some certain markets are definitely more like produce markets. People are looking more for produce. Um, there are markets that people are looking for more of like the craft type items, like my soaps, uh, my uncle's woodworking, things like that. But overall, it is primarily um, produce that people are looking for. And I just haven't had a lot because a multitude of reasons. I don't have, I have a big garden, 
but it's not a market garden. It's not enough to be selling and, you know, saving a lot for ourselves. Um, so it's, some of it I'm using obviously for market, but I can't use all of it because we need to be able to save some. So I need more of, of the things that I'm selling. Uh, and I'm realizing that people really kind of like the different things. People are curious about my beans because I have, you know, I've got wax, the yellow wax beans. I've got the uh, green beans, but I also have the dragon tongue bush beans and the, the burgundy bush beans. Um, and so it's just things that are different. Carrots, my purple carrots. I threw one purple carrot in each of my uh, little cups of my carrots and they sold out. Like they were amazing. People were buying them like crazy. So I think it's just the different things. And I think that's what people look for at farmer's markets. They don't want to go to the farmer's market and get things that they can get buy at the grocery store just as easy. Um, they want some different stuff. Obviously people want local things as well, but different too. So next year I am definitely going to expand upon my production. Um, that is that is really important to me and it's it's something that I'm like, okay, like this is this is what's gonna work for us. Um, so yeah, I need to I need to expand production, but I'm I've been doing pretty well at farmers markets in general. Um, I do sell a couple chickens every, you know, I think the most I've sold at one market was three or four chickens, um, which I know doesn't sound like a lot, but I don't raise a ton of chickens um, and we eat them too. So we want to be able to have our own chickens. Um, so we, you know, we're selling a decent amount and I'm happy with it. And we have more chicks coming actually tomorrow, more meat chicks. I'm actually going to try some of the Red Rangers. So I've got 50 Cornish Cross coming um, and 25 Red Rangers. Now I do expect to lose some. We pretty much always lose a couple, uh, at least. We have lost large quantities of chicks before with the meat, meat chicks. They are just not hardy chicks. That's, that's just, they're not bred for that. They're not bred to be hardy, you know, chicks. The layers we did fine with. We did have three that we lost, but it was really sporadic and it was like not in the beginning when you typically lose them so I'm not sure exactly what happened with that um but that was all we lost out of 35 and whereas you know out of 80 we lost last time I think it was like 25 or 30 chicks total it was it was a lot a lot more than I expected it was really sad um I mean we lost like 17 the first day the first like I you know got them in the morning by the time I came home they were a ton dead um, so I'm anticipating some loss. So I think we'll probably end up with around 50 chickens, uh, meat chickens, which would be probably ideal for us. Uh, and I'm excited to see how the Red Rangers do. I think the Red Rangers will probably be the hardier of the two. Um, and I want smaller chicks this year, <laughs> chickens this time. So that's one thing people ask for is they, they especially if they want to just try a chicken to see if they're going to like the homegrown, you know, home raised chicken. Um, people want small birds. And my first round this, this year, they were, you know, five to six pounds. I had a couple four pounders, but mostly like right in the five pound range, five and a half pound or so. And the second round, the ones I purchased to replace the ones we lost the first time, um, they were all seven, eight pounds. So they were gigantic. They were small chickens or uh, small turkeys. We let them go, I think one week longer than we typically would because the weekend that we would have butchered them or should have butchered them, we had stuff going on. And so we said, oh, what's one more week? Well, a lot apparently. And people just don't necessarily want the big birds. Um, I don't see those selling as much. I do sell, I've sold an eight pounder. I've sold some seven pounders, but not a ton. Um, so I definitely want these ones to be smaller. We will happily eat the seven, eight pounders. It's not a problem. It's great for our family. Uh, with the two kids and my husband and I, we eat a decent amount of the bird and we also use them multiple times. So we cook it the first night and then we, a lot of times we'll um, put it into stew, you know, into soup, we'll make broth with it. And so we use a lot of the chickens. So it's not a big deal if we have some bigger ones. Um, but I, for selling, I want them smaller. So we'll probably process that right at seven, um, seven or eight weeks old to make sure that they're smaller birds this time instead of waiting to like nine, 10 weeks. So yeah, that's kind of what's been going on in the garden. It's been really producing quite a bit, um, tons of beans, tons of jalapenos, um, the carrots did awesome, which I was so excited about. I just replanted the other day for fall. I planted more peas, I planted more carrots, I planted beets, I planted radishes. Uh, radishes I will be able to plant a couple more times even because radishes produce really fast. So I will, um, as I pull things out of the summer, 
part of the garden. I am planting fall things. I need, like this weekend, probably Sunday, I need to get seeds started for my fall garden. Um, so things that I start inside are cabbages, uh, Brussels, not Brussels sprouts, I have Brussels sprouts growing and I'm not adding. Uh, so cabbages, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, kohlrabi, um, I'll probably start some kale as well for the fall because those are my fall things. And then the rest of it will go directly in the garden. More carrots, I have tons of more carrot seeds so I can't wait to get them all planted. Um, I also can't wait to plant things like some more radishes, more beets, uh, some rutabagas, um, my peas I love. So once the trellises are done with the cucumbers, which they're not even producing yet, they're flowering, but no cucumbers yet, um, I will, I'll pull those cucumbers off and then I'll put peas on there as well. So I'm, I have a lot of replanting that I'm going to be doing, which is really exciting. And then I'm also going to cover crop it uh, as I usually do. So we've had just, we just had a ton going on. Just, just a lot. Busy. Farm life, I guess. I mean, I love being this busy in some ways. In some ways it's extremely stressful, but overall, I enjoy it. The markets make me so happy. They are such a, um, a place of like, it just, it, it just brings me such joy to go. And it's not even like, yes, obviously I'm making some money there and I'm selling things, but that's, not the biggest part that makes me happy. Yes, I have to do, I have to have profits to be able to continue to go to these markets. Um, but I love talking to people. I'm a talker. And I love talking to people that, you know, are excited about farming, are excited about gardening and have questions and, and want to know the, the whys and the hows and, you know, where I get my stuff and where I get my seeds and why is this zucchini looking different and why are these beans so good and this and that like just so many different things that they ask and I love it. I love talking to people and educating them about my products. Um, a lot of people have asked about the honey and asked questions about the honey and it's really fun. I talked to other beekeepers there. Um, you know, people who have stopped by, they're like, oh, I don't need honey because I'm a beekeeper, but I wanted this. Um, and I'll talk to them for a while and it's, it's really fun sharing that knowledge and I just, I have such a blast. So I'm really hoping that I can expand on my markets at some point, um, so we'll see. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Remember, we're going today for a better tomorrow. Please like and subscribe and join me on the next one.